Shalakaya Chaksur and Militanye Nat has my Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pistaya Bhutale Shrimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Kauravani Pracharine Nervise Shashanyavadi Paschacha de Satarine Panchakaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bayevacha Patitanam Pavanebio Vaishnavibio Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So we're reading chapter 54 of the Krishna book. Krishna defeats all the princes and takes Rukmini home to Dwarka. Uh. Guru Maharaj, I can't find any Chinese translation. The Mamataji, the one who doing regularly, she is not here. So. Uh, Guru, can... Guru Mani, Guru Mani there? Uh, Guru Mani Mamaji, I can't find any Chinese translation. Oh. 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 I said Shema. Sorry. So she, she's going to try to get the lady to do the translation. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. okay. sure. Okay. We can continue. Yeah, we'll just continue. So I'll give the introduction. We're in the middle of the chapter where Lord Krishna had kidnapped Rukmini just as she was about to be married to Sishupal. So Lord Krishna was taking Rukmini away and Rukmini's brother Rukmi was very angry because Rukmi had arranged her marriage to Sishupal. <coughs> and uh, Ruk, so Rukmi came with his army to chase after Krishna and he vowed he wouldn't come back unless he first killed Krishna and brought his sister back. <coughs> So, so Lord Balaram was there with his army and Lord Balaram sit, he got in between Krishna and Rukmi coming with his army and Lord Balaram's army, they defeated Rukmi's army. But Rukmi tried to fight with Krishna. But Krishna cut his weapons to pieces and then captured Rukmi and tied him up. Actually, Krishna was going to kill him, but Rukmini, Rukmini fell at Krishna's feet and begged Krishna, don't kill my brother. So, because Rukmini has just become Krishna's wife, so Krishna is obliged not to kill Rukmi. 
อรูปมินีเนี่ยกำลังจะเป็นภรรยาของคริชนาดังก็เลยกล่าวไว้ว่าอย่าอย่าสังหารพี่ชายที่ชื่อรูปมินี so instead Krishna began to cut the hair off the head of Rukmi. And he cut off some of the beard also from his face. And he made him look very funny. Actually, it was very humiliating. What Krishna did to Rukmi. Because the Shatriyas, they don't shave their face; they don't cut the hair off the face. But Krishna came because. Krishna wanted to punish him, so he cut off some of his hair and some of his beard. And then Balaram came there, and when Balaram saw what <laughs> Hare Krishna. <laughs> Okay, so Mani, you are here. I will send you as a translator. Yes, thank you. Oh. Okay. Yes, Ramesh. Okay. Yeah. All right. So then Balaram, Balaram began to chastise Krishna and say, "You shouldn't treat your relatives like that because he's your brother-in-law. So you should be nice to your relatives." <laughs> And Balaram also said to Rukmini that well, he's suffering. It's his karma that he's done bad things. He's behaved in a bad way. So Krishna's what happened to him was his reactions for his bad behavior. And Balaram, he, he wanted to pacify Rukmini because he knew Rukmini would be feeling bad about her brother being treated like that. And then Balaram explains to Rukmini, he said, if we think of somebody as being our friend or someone as an enemy or even being neutral, then that means we're in the bodily condition of life. And the bodily condition of life means that we're Influ we're under the control of the illusory energy of Krishna. And we should understand that the spirit soul is always pure, and it's not influenced by the material energy. But there's a class of people who are not very intelligent, and they only see the difference between animals and men. They, they make a distinction between the rich and the poor, and between who's educated and who's not educated. But 
But these differences, that's all on the basis of the body, it has nothing to do with the soul. And it, that's like the difference between fires, just like fires may be made from different types of fuel. Right. You may burn coal, or you may burn wood, or you may burn petrol, so you'll get different kinds of fires, but it's all fire. So it doesn't matter how big or what size or shape is the fuel, it's still fire. It's all going to be fire when you burn it. Yeah, it's, if you burn wood or you burn the coal or you burn the, the paper, you get fire. When the fire comes out, it will just be, it's always fire, although it may, maybe, maybe some, it's all going to be the same. There won't be any real difference in the, in the type of fire, it's the same thing. So in the same way, in the sky, in the sky there's no difference in the shape or in the size. So Balaram was trying, he, want, he was speaking this in, in this way, he wanted to try to pacify the thinking of Rukmini and make her feel more peaceful because she was very disturbed to see how her brother was treated. So Lord Balaram continued to give more instructions to Rukmini. And he told her, this body is part of the material manifestation, which is made of the material elements. The body is made up of the different material elements and the, also the interaction of the modes of nature. So the living entity is, it means the spirit soul is, it comes in contact with the material energy, comes in contact with the material elements. And because he desires to enjoy, he desires to enjoy in the material world, so he takes birth in different bodies. So that is what we call material life. So when the living entity is in touch with the material nature, he he he. He doesn't change, he, but the body changes. So, 
สิ่งที่เปลี่ยนแปลงไปก็คือร่างกายที่เขาจะร่างกายที่เป็นวัตถุที่เขาจะได้รับการเปลี่ยนแปลงไป So Lord Balaram tells Rukmini, he says, the spirit soul is the cause of the material body. Just like the sunlight, just like the, the sun, the sun is the cause of the sunlight. เหมือนกับดวงอาทิตย์ที่เป็นสาเหตุหรือเป็นแหล่งกำเนิดของแสงอาทิตย์ and without the sunlight we wouldn't be able to see with our eyes แล้วเราถ้าปราศจากแสงอาทิตย์เนี่ยเราก็จะตาของเราเนี่ยก็จะมองอีก and we wouldn't understand the different forms in the material world without the sun แล้วเราก็จะไม่เห็นร่างในโลกวัตถุนี้ปราศจากแสงอาทิตย์ So this example of the sunlight and comparing it to the material nature is good to help us to understand how we contact the material world และตรงนี้เนี่ยก็จะเป็นตัวอย่างให้เราเข้าใจได้ว่าเราเนี่ยมีความสัมพันธ์กับโลกวัตถุนี้ได้อย่างไร In the morning, we see the sunrise, and the heat and the light gradually increases through the up to the midday. เราในทุกวันเนี่ยเราก็จะเห็นว่ามีมีพระอาทิตย์เนี่ยขึ้นจนถึงวันตอนเที่ยงวัน So the sun is the cause of all the material shapes and forms. พระอาทิตย์เนี่ยจึงเป็นแหล่งกำเนิดของรูปร่างรูปทรงต่างๆของโลกวัตถุ And because of the effect of the sun, so some things come together and some things break down and come apart. และเป็นเพราะว่าพระอาทิตย์เนี่ยก็ทำให้บางสิ่งบางอย่างได้มาเจอกันบางสิ่งบางอย่างก็ต้องแยกจากกัน And then in the evening. As the sun sets, then the whole material manifestation is no longer connected to the sun. Because when the sun sets, it means the sun is gone some other place. So we know the sun rises in the east, and then it sets in the west. So in the morning, when the sun rises, there will be some effect, and that effect will remain even after the sun moves. ก็จะมีผลมีปฏิกิริยาที่เปลี่ยนแปลงและปฏิกิริยานั้นเนี่ยก็จะคงอยู่จนกระทั่งพระอาทิตย์เนี่ยเปลี่ยนที่ The living entity yeah, just just mute mute them Archana Yes, so the the living entity remains the same, but the sun moves. The sun moves to the west. In the same way. The the living entity also gets different bodies and different relationships due to different bodies. When we when we get the new body, then we forget everything about the old body.
we have, when we get the new body, we forget all about the last body. So Balaram explained the appearance and the disappearance of the body have nothing to do with the living entity. It's just like the moon. Just like we see the moon, sometimes it's growing bigger and sometimes it's growing smaller. We look at the moon and we think, oh, the moon's growing, it's getting bigger, but actually it's the same moon. And, the, and then when we look at the moon another time, we say, oh, the moon is shrinking, it's getting smaller. But actually it's not, it's the same moon. So sometimes we think the moon is getting bigger, sometimes it's getting smaller, but actually it's not. It's always the same. In the same way, we are always the same. So Lord Balaram explains, he said, our consciousness in the material world is like sleeping and dreaming. So when a man sleeps, he dreams of many things which are not real. In the dream, sometimes it will be distress and sometimes it will be happiness. So in the same way, when we are in material consciousness, sometimes we are suffering and sometimes we are happy. Sometimes we, we get a new body and then again we have to give up a body, take and leave the body. So material material consciousness is the opposite of Krishna consciousness. So when we come to Krishna consciousness, then we'll become free from all of this illusion of material life. So in this way, Lord Balaram was telling Rukmini about spiritual knowledge. So he told Rukmini that she should not feel sorry about the different things which are just simply due to ignorance. We become unhappy, it's actually just due to ignorance, due to some wrong understanding. And if we want to get rid of that unhappiness, we just have to discuss the, about the philosophy of real life. So 
We should be happy on the platform of spiritual life. Any happiness on the material platform will bring pain and is due to ignorance and will result in misery. So when Rukmini heard all of these instructions from Balaram, then she became very peaceful in her mind and she was happy. She, she was in, in the beginning, she was feeling sorry for her brother, that her brother was suffering so much. But with Balaram's instruction, then she understood there was no reason for her to feel sorry for him. What happened to her brother was the result of all of his foolish behavior. He tried to fight Krishna and he, he should have known he could never defeat Krishna. So Ruk, Rukmi, he had made a promise that he would kill Krishna and bring back Rukmini, but he was not successful. And he had come from his home, he brought all of his army, all of his soldiers, they could come to, to defeat Krishna, but he failed. He lost all of his soldiers and all of the military strength. And be because, because Krishna had cut off his beard in places and he cut off some of his hair, so he had degraded him. And so he was feeling very sorry, but he was lucky to be alive. Krishna could have killed him, but he didn't. So he could continue living, but he remembered his promise that he wouldn't go home unless he defeated Krishna. So he didn't go back to his king, back to the capital. His capital city was a city called Kundina, but he didn't go back there. So he kept his promise that he wouldn't go back without killing Krishna. So he just stayed where he was and he built a, a cottage for himself in a village. Well, he was angry, of course, that he failed, but he couldn't do anything about it. So he 
So he built himself a, home, a house where he could stay, and he stayed there for the rest of his life. So Rukmini had defeated all the all the armies, all the all the other kings, and he had brought Rukmini with him, and he took her back to his capital, Dwarka. And when they came to Dwarka, then it was arranged for their marriage according to the Vedic ritual principles. So with this marriage, Krishna became also the king of the Yadus at Dwarka. And when he was married with Rukmini, then all the people of Dwarka in every house, they had great celebrations and there were, everybody was very happy. And to celebrate the marriage of Rukmini and Krishna, all the people in Dwarka, they dressed themselves in their best cloth, new cloth and ornaments and they did and they decorated the whole city of Dwarka. They had the nicest ornaments and garments and they went and presented gifts to Rukmini and Krishna. Everybody gave a present just according to their ability. You know, some people are more rich than others, but everybody gave something according to their ability. And the whole, all the houses in Dwarka, Dwarka is called, another name of Dwarka is Yadupuri, or the place of the Yadus. So the, uh, because Krishna was living there, all the Yadus had come there. So the, all the city of Dwarka, all the houses were decorated with flags and flowers. And they put an extra gate in front of every house and they decorated both sides of the gate with big water pots. And to put a nice sick fragrance in the whole city, they were burning nice incense. The whole city had the nice smell of incense. And in the, in the evening, when it got dark, all the houses were lit with lamps, every building. So the whole city of Dwarka was jubilant when Krishna got married to Rukmini. Everywhere in the city there were many different decorations, banana trees and betel nut trees. And 
whenever there's a festival or a nice ceremony, then these trees are very auspicious and they're always used in decoration. Banana tree and the betel nut tree. So at the same time, there was an assembly of many elephants who carried the different kings from all the different kingdoms who would come there for the wedding. Right, all the different friendly kings, they all came to see Krishna's marriage with Rukmini. So they came with their elephants. So it's a habit of the elephants. Whenever they see small plants and trees, then they like to play with them and they pull them out of the ground and throw them. So the, the elephants, they were enjoying pulling out, pulling these different plants and trees out and throwing them. So there were banana trees and betel nut trees everywhere. The elephants had been throwing them everywhere. So actually the elephants, they'd all become intoxicated because of different things they'd been eating and doing, so they had become intoxicated and so they were throwing the trees around everywhere. But still, Dwarka looked very nice. So it's mentioned who were all these different friendly kings who came there for the wedding. So it's mentioned that Bhishma came, Grandfather Bhishma, and Dhritarashtra also came. And the five Pandavas brothers, they were there, and with their wife, Drupadi. And then Rukmini's father came also, his name was Bishmaka. Now Bishmaka, Rukmini's father, initially he was he had arranged Rukmini's marriage to Sishupal. Of course, he'd done it under the desire of his eldest son, Rukmi. So when Krishna kidnapped Rukmini, some uh, King Bhikshmaka, Rukmini's father, was not very happy. He thought, oh, this is not very good. He's stealing my daughter. She was supposed to be married to Sishupal. And so Rukmini's father, King Bishmaka, he was not very happy about this. 
เออฉะนั้นก็ส่งผลให้คุณพ่อเนี่ยมิชมาการเนี่ยไม่ค่อยมีความสุขมากนะ But what happened was Lord Balaram came, and also many other saintly persons, and they all talked to Bishmaka, and they told him that no, it's very good. Your daughter was a good; she's a good wife for Krishna. That Krishna will be a better husband for her. <laughs> And so, in this way, Maharaj Bishmaka he agreed to come for the wedding. But actually, at the time when Krishna kidnapped Rukmini, then people said that there was not very happy. People in the in Vidarbha, in the city where Rukmini lived, the kingdom of Vidarbha, that they were they thought, oh, this is not good. She got kidnapped by Krishna. She was supposed to marry the other man. <laughs> But we should understand. In those times, at those times, it was quite common thing that kings would kid come and kidnap the girl, the woman, or the queen they wanted. It was almost. It was Prabhupada said it was. It was current in almost all the marriages. It happened almost all the time. The kidnapping would go on. But actually, King Bis, I said in the beginning, King Bismaka he wanted his daughter to get married to Rukmini, uh, to to Krishna. He thought Rukmini would be nice for Krishna, but he listened to his eldest son, Rukmi. <laughs> So in this way, anyway, he was persuaded that he should come and join the marriage, come to the marriage ceremony, and see his daughter married. Of course, and of course, the father Maharaj Bishmaka he was a bit worried because he he knew his son Rukmi had been degraded that they cut his hair off and shaved his head for him, so he was worried about that. But still, he went to the marriage. <laughs> And Prabhupada tells us, he says in the Padma Purana, the Padma Purana, another book, it mentions that at the time of the wedding, Maharaj Nanda and all the cowherd boys of Vrindavan, they all came to Dwarka for the wedding. So that's a very long way. They came all the way from Vrindavan to Dwarka just to attend Krishna's marriage ceremony in Dwarka. And kings also came from different kingdoms, like the Kuru kingdom and the Srinjaya kingdom and the Kekaya. And Vidarbha and Kunti, they all came to Dwarka. 
ทุกคนมาจากกษัตริย์ใหญ่ๆกษัตริย์ทางบ้านเนี่ยทุกคนก็มาหมดเคเคคายาวิดาร์บาคุณดีทุกคนก็มาหมดจากราชวงศ์บุรี and they were all it was very joyful they're very happy to be with each other And that, that whole incident of Krishna kidnapping Rukmini, it became uh, it became the topic for people to sing songs about and to write poetry about. And professional readers. They would recite. They would. They would talk about. They would stand up and tell the story of how Krishna kidnapped Rukmini. It became custom for to talk about this and to tell everyone this pastime. And when all the different kings and their daughters, when they heard about all this pastime, about how Krishna kidnapped Rukmini and married her, they were all filled with wonder, and they thought, "Wow, Krishna is so brave." <laughs> And they were all taking great pleasure in hearing the, all these activities of Krishna. So all all the visitors and the people who lived in Dwarka, they were all happy to see Krishna and Rukmini together. Rukmini is the goddess of fortune, and Krishna is the supreme lord. So they're meant to be together. Rukmini is the goddess of fortune, and Krishna is the supreme lord. So they're meant to be together. And all the people were all very happy to see them united together. So Krishna took Rukmini home to Dwarka, and they lived there. So in the next chapter, we will hear how Prajumna is born to Krishna and Rukmini. All right. Is there any questions? And anybody has any questions? Oh? Yes, yes, you uh, m a d u r y a Priya, m a d u Priya, Mohini Priya, is it? Yeah, Mohini Priya. She has a question. Who is Mohini Priya? She. Mohini. She rescued him. Very long time ago, since we start, I don't know. She have question or it just by mistake. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Yeah. Hare Krishna. My name is Jeep. My humble obeisances. I'm sorry to sit up a b o a n Um. So today, I I would like you to explain about Sukriti. Guru Maharaj, I listen class of Sanskrit. I don't understand much about that. Can you explain more? What about about Sukriti? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Well, Sukriti means pious activities. Yeah. 
ความหมายนะคะอยากจะให้อธิบายเกี่ยวกับความหมายของสุขเกติสุขเกติหมายถึงติลกรรมบุญ So pious activities can be in the mode of can be in the mode of goodness or in the mode of passion or in the mode of ignorance. ผลบุญนี้เนี่ยอาจจะเป็นผลบุญที่อยู่ในระดับแห่งความดีตันหานหรือว่าอวิชชา You may perform pious activities in the material world. It will bring you material benefit. It will, you know, just like you give charity to someone, it will come back in the next life. อย่างเช่นกิจกรรมบุญในโลกวัตถุนี้ที่เราได้กระทำไปกิจกรรมบุญนั้นเนี่ยมันจะทำให้เราเนี่ยจะต้องมารับผมผลบุญนั้นในโลกวัตถุนี้ You give some blood in the future somebody will give you blood ถ้าเราให้เลือดกับใครเนี่ยในอนาคตเนี่ยคนนั้นเนี่ยก็จะให้เลือดกับเรามาให้เลือดกับ Or you give money for the hospital In the future, then you can also go to hospital and get treatment. So that's material piety. But if you give, if you give, if you do pious activity, if you give charity to somebody who is a mayavadi or who is an impersonalist. Then that will help you also to get impersonalism. But if you do activities in devotional service, If you do pious activities in devotional service, just like if you help a devotee, so that kind of pious activity that will get you devotional service. Even though you don't know, you didn't know you're doing devotional service. But if you help someone who's a devotee, then that will help. That will qualify you to get the mercy of Krishna and to become a devotee. But if we help someone who's a devotee, then that will help us to get the mercy of Krishna and to become a devotee. But if we help someone who's a devotee, then that will help us to get the mercy of Krishna and to become a devotee. But if we help someone who's a devotee, then that will help us to get the mercy of Krishna and to become a devotee. Lord Krishna says that people who have acted piously in previous lives and in this life, then they become my devotee. And so, if you do activities for a devotee, helping a devotee. And serving the devotee, then that will qualify you to become a devotee. So, Krishna said, someone says they are my devotee, but if they are not devotee to my devotee. Then he said, "They're not really my devotee." But if someone's a devotee of my devotee, then he is my devotee. So Krishna says, the four kinds of people who surrender to me, we all have some sukriti. Krishna 
So they come to Krishna consciousness for different reasons. Krishna said some come in search of wealth. Some come in distress. Some come out of curiosity. And some come in search of knowledge. But they all have some sukriti, they all did some pious activities because they've come to Krishna. Without Sukriti, they cannot come to Krishna. Many people want wealth. They will go other places because they have no Sukriti. So that Sukriti, that pious must be, it must be in relation to Krishna and Krishna's devotees. Okay, is it clear? Um, Guru Maharaj, I have um, more question about Sukriti. Um, it's about if if someone do um, compassion or please the others like human niti is called sukriti or not, Guru Maharaj? What? It um at Nashua Pipana. คือถ้าเกิดว่าเราเหมือนมีเมตตากรุณากับคนอื่นหรือว่าเราเราดีกับคนอื่นเหมือนกับปรารถนาดีอะไรอย่างเงี้ยแต่ว่ามันไม่เ
อาจนะออย่างนี้ก็คล้ายๆกับคนพุทธไปทําบุญอย่างนี้เนะี่ยเหมือนไปทําดีกับคนอื่นแต่ว่ามันขึ้นอยู่กับว่าเราทําอะไรใช่ไหมคือทําในในทางทิพย์หรือว่าทําในวัตถุถูกไหมใช่ค่ะแต่ถ้าเกิดทําในวัตถุเนี่ยเราก็ต้องมารับผลนั้นอีกโอเคหรือว่ามันจะเป็นผลดีจะต้องมารับอีกโอเคอย่างนี้ถ้าเกิดว่าเราเราแอสโซเชตกับกับสาวกคนอื่นถือถ้าเรามีส่วนร่วมพูดคุยกับคริชนาเรื่องคริชนาด้วยกันอย่างเงี้ยถือว่าเป็นสุปริตีแต่ละเขาแค่เห็นแต่เขาไม่ได้จอยเราแปลว่าเขาไม่ได้นะถูกไหม If they only see us perform devotional service, that means but they didn't join us, so they they will not get anything, right? Right. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. I understand. Uh, thank you for your explanation, Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Uh, Yogita, Madhuri. Yes, ma'am. Ji, thank you. Hare Krishna, Gurudev. Please accept humble obeisances. Of course, to you and Shri Prabhupada. Gurudev, I want to ask. Um, this really looks very similar, no? Uh, Lord Krishna also had Arjuna kidnap his sister Subhadra, but uh, Lord Balram got angry. Could we say it's because Arjuna was not dressed like a Shatriya, but was pretending to be a Brahmana at that time? Is there any connection in these two instances? No, we don't know of any. p r a b h u p a d said, p r a b h u p a d said it was very common for Shatriyas to kidnap at the time of marriages. It was, okay. it was just something. You know something which happened like that. You know. Mm. So that means even if Arjuna has changed his um, attire, his clothes, pretended to be a brahmana, that was considered fair enough because that's what Kshatriyas did at that time. Well, <laughs> yeah, Ar Arjuna did it anyway. Yeah. Ah, okay. So it was still fair. Okay, because I couldn't figure out to would it be fair because he. Change his dress, or should have been dressed like a shatriya. I mean, I couldn't figure well, out. Well, Krishna didn't change his dress. Krishna didn't yeah. have to do that, but Arjuna, yeah. did. Arjuna did it. It was a mm. special and thing. Lord Krishna had told him that he's supposed to do this, right? No, to come I, I don't know that Lord Krishna told him, but Lord Krishna didn't object. Lord Krishna didn't object to Arjuna marrying Subhadra. Yeah. Mm. Okay, good. Okay. Balaram okay. was upset. Lord Balaram. Yeah, he was. That's why I couldn't figure out. I mean, how come Lord Balaram got afraid, uh, afraid, upset over something that was common amongst Kshatriyas? Yeah. Well, because Lord Balaram was thinking that Subhadra was going to marry. With uh, Duryodhana, and Duryodhana, no? mm. <laughs> and Duryodhana. Duryodhana is like the student of Lord Balaram. Yeah. So. Okay. So mm. you know when you have your mind fixed one way, you know, and then all of a sudden, you know, it goes the other way. It's a shock, you know. It's not something which is. Uh, You expect it, so you can get quite upset about it. You could imagine. True. Mm. Okay, very good. Got it. Thank you. But anyway, Lord Krishna begged Lord Balaram. He begged Lord Balaram to forgive Arjuna, mm. Lord Krishna, mm. and because Lord Balaram wants to please Lord Krishna, so he forgave. He forgave Arjuna. Mm. But I don't know any connection. I don't know how how why there's a connection. No. No connection. Okay. I just thought in case because even he had kidnapped himself, and then his sister did he get her kidnapped just to you know, but there's no connection that we all know of, right? In the scriptures. Not that I know. So. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Great. Hmm. Thank you. Okay. 
คําถามของมันนี้นะคะก็ถามว่ามีความเชื่อมสัมพันธ์กับการลักพาตัวของออร์ดูนาที่ลักพาตัวสุบัตราอยู่ด้วยไหมในนี้เพราะตอนนั้นเนี่ยเหมือนบาร,รัมเนี่ยสมไม่ค่อยพอใจสาเหตุที่บาร,รัมไม่พอใจเนี่ยเนื่องจากบาร,รัมอยากจะให้ให้เนาะให้สุบัตราเนี่ยแต่งกับเอ่ออะไรเชื่ออะไรแต่งกับดีดีดราสเอ่อลูกชายของดูริโอดอนเขาก็เลยเขาก็เลยไม่ค่อยไม่ค่อยพอใจขนาดนั้นแต่ว่าตามหลักพิธีการแล้วเนี่ยก็คือไม่ได้ไม่ได้ผิดอะไรเพราะว่าสมัยก่อนคือกษัตริย์เนี่ยจะรักพาตัวกันอยู่แล้วโอเคเอ่อ you got you got two more question โอเคเนี่ย you want this a c h i m a t you want this a c h i m a t i n the question Yes, Guru Dev. Hare Krishna. Please accept my humble obeisances, O Guru s h i s h i l a Prabhupada. Guru Maharaj, I cannot understand. Should we do material charity without Krishna consciousness distribution? For example, to help with money, to help materialists like this. Well, some cases you are supposed to do it just like. If you go to a holy place, when you go to the holy place, there are people begging, people who are begging in difficult conditions. They need, you know, they have some difficulties in their material life, and they're begging. And so, people who are well-to-do, they should help. They should give some charity. It's expected when you go to a holy place. That's the proper place to give charity in a holy place. สเตมันจีก็ถามเรื่องการทําบุญบอกว่าเราถ้าอย่างนี้เนี่ยบางทีบางครั้งเนี่ยเราทําบุญด้วยเงินของเราแล้วมันต้องเป็นเกี่ยวกับกิจการที่สำนึกอย่างเดียวไหมหรือว่าถ้าไม่เป็นเนี่ยมันมันจะได้ไหมแต่ที่คุณมาก็ตอบว่าอย่างการให้ทานในเรื่องของการทําบุญเรื่องเงินเนี่ยมันเราควรทําเวลาเราไปเยือนสถานที่ศักดิ์สิทธิ์เพราะที่นั่นเนี่ยจะมีคนแบบว่านั่งขอทานอยู่เยอะก็คือเขามีปัญหาทางการเงินจริงๆเราก็สามารถทำบุญตรงนั้นได้เราควรระวังในการให้ทานเพื่อให้ผู้ที่มีปัญหาทางสมาธิเนี่ยเขาจะได้รับการช่วยเหลือแต่เราจะต้องมีความระมัดระวังในการให้ทานถ้าเกิดว่าผู้ผู้คนเนี่ยนำเงินที่เราให้ทานเนี่ยไปทำในกิจกรรมที่เป็นบาปเนี่ยอันนั้นเราจะต้องรับกรรมด้วย If you give money to someone and they use your money to go and buy cigarettes or drugs or alcohol, then you get also karma. If we give money to someone and they use our money to buy cigarettes or drugs or alcohol, then you get also karma. If we give money to someone and they use our money to buy cigarettes or drugs or alcohol, then you get also karma. If we give money to someone and they use our money to buy cigarettes or drugs or alcohol, then you get also karma. If we give money to someone and they use our money to buy cigarettes ถ้าเราให้เงินกับผู้คนแล้วเขาไปใช้เงินนั้นซื้อเนื้อสัตว์เนี่ยเราก็ต้องรับกรรมตรงนั้น So we when we give charity we prefer to give prasadam rather than to give money เพราะฉะนั้นเราให้ให้ทานเนี่ยเราเน้นการให้ประสาดมากกว่า We're cautious about You give money. You, you give money. You want to be sure the money is used in the proper manner. It should be used for the service of Lord Krishna. If we give money, because money will be able to be used in many things. So we have to be careful. 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 We You, you should understand they are also part of God's family, and they may need help. So, we, if we are in, if we are quite well to do, if we are able to, then we should try to help them and give some charity. But as you mentioned, we are going to go to the temple. If we are going to go to the temple, we have a lot of money to help others. We are able to help others. We are able to help others. So we have to be careful about where and to whom you do charity. Now, 
there's charity in the mode of goodness, in the mode of passion, and in the mode of ignorance. If you, if you do charity to the unqualified person to engage in sinful activities, that's the mode of ignorance. And charity in the mode of passion is where you give charity to get a good name and to be known as somebody who's very pious. Yes, Guru Maharaj, thank you very much. It's so very the, clear now. The best charity is to give in Krishna consciousness. If, if you can give in a holy place, if you can give on a on an auspicious day, a, a special day in the holy place, then it's very good. There are some days that are more auspicious than others. Okay. Yes, thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Guru Maharaj, there are some questions in the chat from oh. Chinese devotees. Really? Okay. Yes. All right. Uh, Suburi Rai Prabhu? Yes, good day. Hare Krishna, good day. Please accept my humble basics of Guru Chushra um, Baba. Um, I want to understand that in the Bhagavad Gita, uh, chapter 6, verse uh, number 7, there is said, who is conquered the mind and uh, the spring soul is already reached. How to understand this? <laughs> เวลาบอกเรื่องของเราเราก็เรียนว่าสิ่งนี้ฉันนี่ไม่ได้เกี่ยวกับคําตามของโปรดีนะก็มาจากมาจากบทที่ 6 สโลกที่ 7 บอกว่าสําหรับ so, so the meaning is if you if you've got control over your mind then you can actually understand also that the Lord is there in your heart. Because that we're not just the spirit soul, and the spirit soul is a part of the Supreme Lord who is situated in the heart. You have reached, but you have not surrendered. You may have reached, you conquered over the mind, but still, you, it doesn't mean you're fully Krishna conscious. You have to go on. So conquering the mind, how to conquer the mind? We have to we have to uh, understand the nature of the mind. The nature of the mind is to make distinction. We think in terms of friend and enemy. We think this is good, this is bad. This is all material considerations. <laughs> Material considerations means you're thinking of the body in terms of the body. But when we understand that the mind is only 
vehicle is only the mind is just perceiving these different things due to our conditioning we'll become indifferent to the mind we won't worry about the mind we'll transcend the mind แล้วเมื่อเรามีความเข้าใจเกี่ยวกับจิตใจอย่างแท้จริงว่าความจริงเนี่ยจิตใจนี้เนี่ยไม่ได้เป็นตัวหลักแต่ว่าเป็นแค
that's your problem. You gave the money. Why did you give the money to him? You should ha you have to understand that when you give people something, it's not always true that they're going to give you back. <laughs> Why did you give it? If you, if you shouldn't have given it, if you, you should know that when you give something to someone, it may not come back. That's the, the risk you take. <laughs> Okay, next question. Uh, here is a question from the chat from Vaishnavi Bani. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, my humble obeisance, all glory to Shri Papa. Lord Father Ram is telling all relationship when the body sacrifice they did for other family members everything and death. Can you understand Guru? No. Okay, I, I, I speak. Lord Balaram is telling you all relationships and of the service and the sacrifice they did for other family members if everything ends with death. Of course, everything does not end with death. That, yeah. It's foolish to think everything ends with death. So whatever you do, whatever you, you activity you perform in this life, you get the reactions in the next life. Everyone is suffering and enjoying according to our past activities. These past activities were done in the previous life, could have been the previous life they were performed. เกิดจากการเหล่านี้เนี่ยที่เราได้รับอยู่เนี่ยก็เนื่องมาจากเป็นผลการที่เราทํามาแต่อดีตชาติเพราะฉะนั้นที่เราทําอยู่นี้เรา
should we save him? You know, the man may be, a, you know, maybe the man is drunk or something, maybe he's a, you know, a sinful person and he's degraded. So should we bother to try to save him? Well, <laughs> well, there's two sides to it, you see. One thing we, we could say, well, it's his karma. You know, what, why should we interfere with his karma? He's drowning, you know, let him drown. You know. But not, on the other hand, if we save him, then public opinion will think, oh, Hare Krishna people are good. But if we don't save him and we say, oh, no, let him, I'm not going to... Then they say, oh, Hare Krishna people are very cold-hearted. And so that's not good. If people think that we're all cold-hearted and we don't have compassion and we don't care about other people, no, we do care about people. We want people to have a good impression about Krishna consciousness. And so for the service of Krishna, we will do it. We will try to help him, try to save people. So for the service of Krishna also, you could give blood, you know, you could think I'm giving blood for the service of Krishna. But of course you don't know what your blood is going to be used for. Your blood may be used for, you know, somebody who is an animal, a, a butcher or a hunter. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. I, I get your point. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you. เอ่อการให้เลือดอ่ะนะคะว่าล่าสุดเนี่ยเพิ่งไปให้เลือดมาแล้วมันดีหรือไม่ดีอะไรอย่างเงี้ยกูมาก็บอกว่าต้องดู
อจอาจจะดูได้ปั๊บหนึ่งโอเค no more questions no more okay so we thank all the devotees for their participation thank all the devotees for their translation <laughs> right Guru Mani and Archana Mariji thank you for your translation thank you Guru Mani for the opportunity thanks to all the devotees and have a good time good week stay safe Hare Krishna Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai yeah. Guru Maharaj Ki Jai yeah.